In this video, I'd like to walk through a few good examples of evaluating limits. And these are limits that you might see in the first semester of calculus. These are limits you might see in the first semester of analytic geometry and calculus one. To start with, this limit as x approaches infinity of negative 3x to the third plus 5 minus 6 x to the sixth minus 5x to the eighth. That's not written very nicely, is it? Really proper format would put this in descending order so that we would see that the lead term is a negative 5x to the eighth. Well, when we've got a limit, the, one of the first things we want to uh, really note is what is the x or the variable? What are we approaching? We want a limit as x is approaching infinity. So what I want to notice here is that I could use this uh, fact that the limit as x approaches infinity of a polynomial is equivalent to the limit as x approaches infinity of its lead term. So the limit of negative 5x to the 8th. And that limit is negative 5 times a positive infinity to the eighth, which is positive infinity. And uh, although you might be tempted to write negative five times infinity, if you take a step back and think about it, you don't really make that infinity any bigger by multiplying by this tiny little five. So it's going to suffice to simply say negative infinity, and that's it. The second example, if we simply think about direct substitution, then let me write that out. We're going to use direct substitution. Then what we're going to do is replace the x with the negative 3. Again, the, uh, like I mentioned for the last example, we want to note for this limit, what is x approaching? x is approaching negative 3. So if I use direct substitution to replace this x with a negative 3, let's see what that looks like. We have 2 times negative 3 squared plus, how do you like this, 3.14 pi. Don't be afraid of that. It's just a constant. It's just pi times 3.14. It's not 3.14 squared. Uh, so leave that pi. Don't do anything with it. When I look at this 2 times the opposite of 3 squared, the opposite of 3 squared is a positive 9. So 2 times 9 is 18 plus 3.14 pi. Next, we have the limit of tangent of pi as x approaches 2. This is a trick question almost. Because by direct substitution, there's no x. What's the limit of a constant? The limit of a constant, let me write this down. The limit of a constant, no matter what x approaches, 791. No matter what it approaches, the constant is still the constant. So we could say that the limit as x approaches 2 of this constant tangent pi is going to equal the tangent of pi. I could write that this is the tangent of pi, but the tangent of pi can be simplified. If I think of my unit circle and I find pi, the cosine of pi is negative 1, sine is 0, so the tangent sine of pi over the cosine of pi is 0 over negative 1 or just 0. So the tangent of pi is 0, which gives us that the limit as x approaches 2 of the tangent of pi is 0. I'm going to turn to a new page so I have plenty of space for this next example. The limit of sine of x over 5x as x approaches 0. Remember this the limit as x approaches 0 of sine box, anything. Fill the box, fill it in. Over box, now just make sure that the two boxes match up. 
If these two match up, the sign box over box, the limit as x approaches zero of sign box over box is just one. Well, this isn't quite a box over box, right? We have our limit as x approaches zero of sine x, I could say sine x over x, and I'm gonna pull this five out to the side a little bit. So here is our one. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is gonna be equivalent to the limit as x approaches zero of, see I've got a one-fifth times sine box over box. So I could say that the limit of a product is the product of the limits. Well, the limit of one-fifth as x approaches zero, it's a constant, is just one-fifth. And by definition, the limit of sine box over box as x approaches zero is one. So the limit of x over 5x as x approaches zero is one-fifth times one or one-fifth. I can apply a similar strategy to this next example, sine of 8x over 2x. Let me break this up again. So we have the limit as x approaches zero. Let me write this as two limits. See how I've, I've just broken that 2x in the denominator? I've broken it into uh, two pieces. So I've taken the sine, x, sine 8x over 2x and broken it into a sine 8x over x times a half. What can I do to build a sine box over box? Well, I have an 8x in the numerator, so I need an 8x in the denominator. How do I counter that? I multiply times an eight in the numerator. So that eight that I inserted in both the numerator and in the denominator counters each other because it's just the multiplicative identity. I've multiplied by eight over eight, which is one. And then if I simplify this, the limit of sine eight X over eight X is one. And the limit of eight over two, well, eight divided by two is Four, so I have 14 now. Make sure you notice that that's time, so one times four, or four. One more example, do you remember simplifying by factoring? This last example of a limit, if I use direct substitution, I get a zero in the denominator. So what I need to do is factor, I can factor an X out of everything in the numerator. So by direct substitution, I get a problem because I have a zero in the denominator. In the denominator, I've got an x factored, but if I factor an x out of the numerator, 3x squared divided by x is 3x, 7x divided by x is 7, x to the fifth divided by x is x to the fourth, 9x divided by x is 9. So those x's factor out, and I'm left with the limit of x to the 4 plus 3x plus 2 over 7x minus 5 as x approaches 0. Using direct substitution, x to the fourth becomes zero, because uh, it's zero to the fourth. Three times zero plus two over seven times zero minus five. So it looks like I'm left with a two over negative five, or just negative two-fifths. And that's it. I hope these examples of limits has been helpful to you. Let me jot these in for you so you don't have to pause and go back again and again. If you want to see the work for those three, you could turn over to the previous page. Hope you found these limits helpful. 
and hope you enjoy doing similar limits to practice on your own.